Uh, okay, continuing the discussion from the uh, Get Off the X forum, uh, James did a video recently about his bug out trailer, which is based on a cargo trailer, uh, an enclosed cargo trailer. I did one on my mobile workshop, which is a modified enclosed cargo trailer. And the discussion also went over to camper trailers. So th this one's mine. It's uh, featured in some of my other videos, but if you don't want to backtrack through the channel and watch those, uh, I'll, I'll make it short and sweet here. It's, it's, it's over 20 years old. It's an older 20-foot camper trailer. Uh, self-contained, and when I say self-contained, that means it, it basically it has a bathroom. Okay, It's got a full bath. It's fully functional. Um, all that stuff is it's there. It's fully functional. It's got a bathroom. Um, the shower, tub, everything like that. Now that means that it has a water tank, that, that one right under the, uh, the bed area there, and it's, that's, that's as far as it can go. Other than that, you've got to hook it up to an external garden hose. There's really a limit to how much water you're going to carry here, and that's wash water. That's not drinking water. That's a different story. Uh, the other thing about these trailers, usually when you get up to the sides, it's a double axle. And when you get older ones, those trailer brakes don't always work. Uh, that's reality. Now, what Darkside Armor says about how people really shouldn't be operating these things without the trailer brakes, he's right about that to a degree, but if all you're doing is moving one of these a short distance, there's no hills involved, uh, you're not trying to go full highway speed or, or be responsive with the vehicle, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's, uh, but if you're taking a long trip over the highway, yeah, you got to have you got to have the trailer brake system fully functional. If you do happen to need to transport one of these with any question about the trailer brake functionality, you have to have it nearly empty, and that means not not having your gear in it, not having your food and all that. A lot of people will empty out the sewer and the water tanks before transporting in order to save fuel. So with something like this, yeah, there are people that would do take these along on a bug out convoy, but they got to be, the maintenance has to be right on in order for this to actually be part of a bug out convoy. And if you're part of the freeway jamming with one of these, you're probably going to be more part of the problem than part of the solution. It's, it's something that needs to be staged at a location beforehand on an orderly bug out type thing. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not a bug out, but an evacuation. Um, and then restocked with the supplies, or you can carry the supplies in a truck. The idea is that on conventional vehicles, not tractor trailer rigs, uh, pickups, vans, uh, maybe large cars, although the advice about not towing one of these with a car is probably right on, uh, is you, you would move a lot of your food, a lot of your cargo stuff to the towing vehicle. If the towing vehicle is heavier than the trailer, things tend to handle a little bit better on the road. If most of the weight is in a trailer, I mean, it can still work. It's just not optimum. Uh, the other thing is, is a lot of these trailers are set up with dark interiors. Uh, this one's been refinished with a washable paint and an anti-mildew paint because I live in the Pacific Northwest. And dry rot's a constant issue. On the dry rot issue, I've, I've looked at high-end, low-end, medium-end trailers uh, you know, a, a fucking trailer is a trailer. When they get old, a trailer is a trailer. I, 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 and people who live in trailers are trailer people. Uh, it, it, the only time you start getting into something, I, I, you know, that, that's really higher class is maybe some of the newer Airstream stuff. Uh, apart from that, you know, Winnebago, Jayco, all, all these other brands, on a I don't care, man. It's, it's, it's a trailer is a trailer. Uh, you, you can rebuild them on the inside to make things a little bit nicer like I did here. I got this one in trade basically for about 800 bucks, and the rest of it was just practicing my handyman skills to fix up the interior. I never fixed up the exterior because I, I didn't want it to look all that special on the outside. And then I'm afraid to even mention what I spent on a solar uh, setup here, but this is fully functional off-grid and I can run power tools on it. I have uh, deep cycle batteries under the seat here where uh, this is sufficient to run a lot of stuff. Those are high-end deep cycle batteries. I've gotten a really good deal on them. Uh, there's a 2000 watt inverter here from where the... Uh, the fridge had been removed, so I really wanted to, to remove anything to do with propane stuff here, but these stoves just don't want to come out, and replacing that with electrical cooking isn't really 
it isn't really practical. Um, but I've been able to have both AC and DC here. Uh, this little antenna booster, I put it outside, and I have pretty decent, uh, you know, pretty decent TV reception. Uh, so that's regular transmitted TV. Uh, the other thing is, of course, there's a lot of Wi-Fi uh, 4G devices. If somebody wants to hook a computer into the docking station and play games or whatever, I, I mean, you can hang out here. Uh, the thing is, it's still kind of limited on living space. So, yeah, one person can sleep here. I'm single, that works. I can extend the bed out and make it a, a queen-size bed. But, you know, I could also carry some pretty healthy-sized tents on a cargo trailer and set those up and have a lot of living space. So, if I were to have one of these at a larger encampment, it's, it's not bad as a utility hub in the mid-term. Okay, long-term, you want to put up real buildings. Mid-short-term, you can do camping. Uh, Mid-term, to have a bathroom, to have a real sink. Uh, I've got uh, one of those uh, in-sink hot water heaters, so I can just run hot water right here. Uh, to have a real stove to cook on, that, that does make a difference as far as morale and life comfort. Uh, but you, you, can't, you can't really make it part of a plan to bug out with this on short I, I mean you could but it's got to be part of a convoy um, it, it really does and you can't I, I did at one time pack this thing with six months worth of freeze-dried food I've since removed most of it I'm probably going to take out the rest of it and just pre-stage it someplace and just have a couple of those 72 hour bucket kits uh, I, I began again as pre-staging at a retreat location uh, having these on your property as a backup guest house or something like that that works I mean that's, that's not a bad idea if you have a retreat location that people have decided to move to full-time and they have time to prepare it these also make a very good um, mid-term residence uh, uh, option so if you you go and you you originally you scout out the property you purchase the property you make all your plans for what you're going to build there and you're going to move a few people there even if it's just uh, part time you can take trailers up and at least have a residence location for the weekends as you get some things built if somebody's going to go there full time you've made a commitment to go there full time and maybe you're going to build uh, construct regular buildings as you can afford them. That makes sense. Uh, there's a group out of, I believe, Missouri. Uh, the guy's uh, channel, like it's called Shofar Mountain. The guy's channel is uh, past. It's Pastor Joe Fox, I think, at Viking Preparedness. They're basically living in trailers until they get their houses built, and this summer they've been putting up regular buildings. Uh, Pastor Dowell at his Hebrew Israelite community, I think, in Tennessee or Kentucky or something like that. They are, uh, they originally lived in trailers, now they've got houses for about everybody there. And so as a transitional thing for somebody who's setting up a survival retreat that's going to probably be a long-term project, these work. For bugging out, you know, it's kind of questionable. But it gives you the ability, if you own one of these, and they're not a hell of a lot of money to get them used, uh, to kind of prepare things and get things put together, especially if you do not own real estate or you do not have a location picked out yet, or you don't want to become fully invested in a retreat location where you may feel that your next appropriate action is to pick up and leave. That maybe things aren't getting along, maybe, maybe you feel that the wrong type of people have become involved in it, or you didn't fully understand the type of people you got involved with, and you just kind of want to take your take your marbles and go to another location. If your backup home prep is based on one of these trailers, then that's more possible than if you purchased or built a cabin on the property as your contribution or, or involvement in the group. So, you know, it allows you a level of mobility. I just don't see it as, as the bug out thing. I, I think it's the type of thing where if you want to get established at a retreat location, but maybe not jump in totally with both feet, uh, you still want to be able to remove yourself and your survival assets. It, it's probably going to take more than one trip, but the trailer, 
you know the trail is a pretty good transitional mid-turn type thing uh, again just not for bug out and then if you're going to have this as an off-grid residence not just a part-time weekender i would highly suggest setting up the interior to be particularly low maintenance in rough conditions i replaced all the cabinet fronts and doors or actually i painted all the cabinet fronts with that mildew resistant and then uh polyurethane paint and then you had a polyurethane finish on all the doors, all the cabinet face, faces, uh, and, and all that stuff. So that it's not something that picks up mildew or odors and it's easily cleanable. Uh, I, can, I can sweep this thing out and get 99% of the dirt and stuff out of it. And it's all wipeable, moppable surfaces. Uh, I, I can't believe it when I go to Camping World and I see how they have some of those brand new trailers. They have, have carpet in them. Okay, that does not belong in a backwoods place. Okay, carpet in one of these things is just fucking dumb. Uh, don't do it. Uh, now, whether you want genuine wood floor or this, this is actually a plastic tile, not ceramic. It's semi-flexible. That's actually a sticky down type of imitation wood, which strangely enough, this plastic tile costs more than a real thing, and that stuff costs more than real wood. Um, the section on the bed here needed a little bit of reinforcement, so that's actually a, a panel of real wood flooring that I got from a place I worked at. Everything else is just kind of built up over time, but I, I do have a power system that's both DC and AC with a backup inverter. Uh, one of the plugs here runs off of its own inverter, and so it's separate from the other system. So there's backup, there's redundancy in the systems, all that sort of a thing. Uh, believe it or not, they, I, I'm producing about 450 watts worth of power, and it's still not sufficient to run this air conditioner off of uh, 400 amps worth of battery in a 2000 watt inverter. So these air conditioners suck a lot of power. I'm probably going to end up just removing it and replacing it with another skylight vent. I, I, I also want to get some weight off of the trailer and see how mobile I can do things with some weight removed. And uh, that's that's all part of the game plan, but you, you got to think of these as kind of a backup possibility for an off-grid home. And if you're going to bug out with something like this, you've got to be thinking convoy with its own maintenance and recovery assets uh, being able to deal with those flat tires or something that goes wrong uh, otherwise you just lose too much if you have to ditch one of these things on the side of the road and I, I have another video of somebody that had a breakdown in in town they were obviously living in an RV they had a breakdown and they were having to move back into shopping carts and a sad situation for them you, you definitely want to avoid that and get to a retreat location so that you're not you know you're not stuck in one of those really bad situations uh, because these things really the older they are the harder you treat them the less mobile they they're really going to be